What's up guys, we're back to my channel here and making 67 here. And today, we are going to read Five Nights at Freddy's Silver Eyes. It is written by Scott Cawthon, and you mean no one's no. Five Nights at Freddy's series. If you want to read along, you can, but if you don't, you just want to listen. And, you know. So every Sunday, I want to do this thing, so every Sunday or so, we're going to do a book. Every Sunday. So, like, we're, and we can read different genres, too, like, anything that you like. Personally, I like fantasy and Finance of Freddy's mixed, or, you know, like, fun, I, I collect all Finance of Freddy's books and so on. If you want to follow along, you can. Um, be warned, um, Finance of Freddy's, <laughs> the books is kind of dark. Darker than, I see the games, it's more darker. Yep, so, I love you guys, like, comment, subscribe, share, and there will be more videos like this one. I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> I'm gonna move you guys to the side, because I can't really see squat, so. Hold on. I hope you can guys see that, I hope... I can't make the camera any bigger. But I hope you guys can see that I'm hoping. He, uh, he sees me. Charlie dropped her to her hands, and he's... She was wretched behind a row of arcade games, cramped in a crawl space between the... Colossal... Colossals and the wall tangled. Sorry, guys, if I have a learning disability, so, you know. In the wall, tangled electronic cords and useless plugs uh, still in beneath her. She was concerned. The only way out is past that thing. She wasn't fast enough to make it. She could see him stalking back and forth, catching flickers of the moment through the gaps between the games and, uh, secretly, uh, enough room to move. But she tried to crawl backward. Her foot cut on the cord. She stopped, uh, contouring herself and carefully mm, disenlarging it. She heard a clash of the metal on the metal on metal in the 4, 4S console. Rock back in, against the wall, hitting it again and shattered, shattering the display. The attack next, crashing against them. I hope you guys can see that. Honestly, I really, when I edit this, I really hope, hope to God you guys see this. I hope you can see the other side too. I'm really trying, guys, but I don't have that much room here. Almost rhythmically t uh, tearing through the machinery. Come. Coming, clo coming closer. I have to get out. I have to get out. The panic through was no helping. There was no way out. Her arm ached, and she wanted to sob out. Sob loud. Blood soaked through the tattered bandage, and it seemed as though she could feel it drain down over the console. Few feet away, crashing against the wall, and Charlie flinched. He was getting closer. She could hear the grinding gears of the clicking of servos and even louder I even louder eyes close and she still uh, see the way of looking at her. See the mattered fear the exposed metal beneath the uh, scent of a uh, scent of light fresh. I finally said that right. Suddenly the constant fern was wrenched away and the top tumbled over Thrown down like a toy. The power cores beneath her hands. And these were yanked away. And Charlie slipped, almost falling. She caught herself, looked up, and just in time, see the downward the swing of, of hook. Welcome to the Hurricane Utah. Is that even a place? Let me know if that's a place in the comments. Charlie smiled. Really, at the sign of to keep driving. 
the uh, the world didn't look any different from one side of the of this one side of the sign to the other, but uh, felt nervous and uh, anti action and she passed it. She, uh, she didn't recognize anything, and again, she didn't really expect to much uh, as far as the edge of town, where it is all hardly an empty space. That sounds lonely to me. <clears throat> she wondered all the others would look like, who they were now. Ten years, ten years, they'd be best friends, and then it happened. Everything ended, at, at, at least for Shirley. She hadn't seen any of her friends since she was seven years old. They had written all the time as kids, especially Marilla, who wrote like she talked fast, and and her Helen. But as, but as they got older, they had to go grown apart. You know what happens in life. The letters had grown fewer, fewer than between, and the conversations led up to this trip and had been Per fun to per fun con Terry and Phil of the awkward pause. Charlie repeated their name as always to reassure herself that she still remembered them. Marilla, Jessica, Lamar, uh, Clint, Clarton, John, and Michael. Michael was the reason for the trip. After all, it's been it was ten years since he died. Ten years since it happened, and then his parents wanted all of them together for the deluxion uh, ceremony. They all wanted it as old friends. There then, they announced a scholarship that their creation of his name. Charlie knew it was a good thing to do, but gathering uh, still felt slightly uh, mark marked. Damn it! There's some words I can't say. <clears throat> she shivered and turned down air, the uh, air condition, even though she knew it was not cold. As they drove down into town center, Charlie began recognizing th uh, things. A few stores and a movie theater, which was new now advertising the summer blockbuster hit. She felt a brief moment of surprise and... Um, then smiled at herself. What could you expect? The whole place would be unchanged. A moment to... A ma a ma you and... Oh, okay. To the moment of... Gepar. Frozen forever in July, 1985. Well... I'm probably gonna do like a couple parts. So this is part one. So I'm gonna you on them. I never read out loud. This is the first time I read aloud. I read in my head. If you're a reader, you know it's more easier reading in your head than out loud. It's distracting while doing it. That is exactly what she had expected. She looked at her watch. Still a few minutes, hours to kill before all the time met up. She thought about going to a movie. But she knew what she was really wanting to do. Charlie made a left turn and headed out of town. Ten minutes later, she pulled up and stopped and got out. The house loomed up before her in the dark outline. A wound in the bright blue sky. Charlie leaned back against the car, slightly dizzy. She took a moment to steady herself with a deep breath. She had no one and it would be here. An intellect look through her aunt's um, bank books a few years before... Uh, had told her that the mortgage was paid off and that Aunt Jen was still paying the property taxes. It had only been ten years. There is no reason that could have changed at all. Charlie climbed on uh, the steps slowly, t uh, taken in the uh, peeling paint. And the third uh, stair uh, still had uh, side of the... had a loose board. Sorry. The... Rose Bush had taken it over on the side of the porch. For the, the, their thorns biting hungrily in the wood. And the door was locked, but Charlie still had her key. She had never actually used it, so she took it out from around her neck and swayed it to walk in. 
And she remembered that her father had put in a chain around her neck. Then, Caius, you, uh, you ever need it? Well, she needed it now. <clears throat> the door opened easily, and Charlie looked around. She didn't remember much, but the first couple of years here, she had been only three years old, and all the memories had faded together, and it was a blur of a child's grief and loss, and not understanding why her mother had to go away, clinging to her father every moment, not trusting the world around her unless he was there, unless she was holding tightly on him, burying herself in his fl uh, flannel shirt. Question, what is a flannel shirt? If you know, comment in the comments. And the smell of the gray, of the grease and the hot metal on, uh, hot metal and him. I thought, I thought I was supposed to sit on, but, you know. The stairs stretched, um, up in front of her, but she did not move directly to them. Instead, she went into the living room where all the furniture was still in place she had not realized, really noticed it was a child. But the house was still be too lo little too large for the furniture that that he had uh things or uh spread out too too widely in order to fill the place. The coffee table was way too far from the couch to reach, and ease easy chair to far across the room to carry on the on the conversation. Oh, <sighs> there was a dark stain in the wood, wooden floor, floorboards near the center of the room. Charlie stepped out and quickly went in the kitchen where the cupboards had uh, only a few pots and, plans and pots and pans and the dishes. Charlie had never felt the lack of anything as a child. Meaning as he had known that it was unnecessary in your... in your omni? I think that's all it's about. Of the house was sort of apology to attempt it of a man who had lost so much to give his daughter what she could. He'd always had a way, uh, had a way of, uh, overdoing what he, what he did. Last time she was here at the house had been dark and everything felt wrong. She carried all, uh, all the stairs, uh, up the stairs. To her room before, although she was seven years old and not could have. Gone flicker on her own two feet, but Aunt Jed had stopped on the front porch, picked up her up and carried her. She lay in her face as though she was baby, uh, in the glaring sun. In her room, Aunt Jenny sat Charlie down and closed the bedroom door behind him. She told her to pack her suitcase, and Charlie had cried because all the things could ever fit in that small, small suitcase. We can come back for the rest later, Aunt Jen said her, her impatience leaking uh, through, and Charlie hovered in turn in tenvesily. I finally said that right. And her... Uh, and dress her trying to decide on what she t shirt belonged to bring along. They had never came back for the rest. Charlie mounted the stairs, headed to her old old bedroom. The door was pa partially cracked. And then uh, she opened it and had a giddy feeling of displacement, as though her younger self might be sitting there amongst her toys. Might look up at and ask Charlie, "Who are you?" That's pretty creepy, honestly. It's pretty creepy. Charlie went in. Look, looks like the rest of the house and her bedroom was untouched. The walls were pale pink. The ceiling was slop dara mentally, metallically. So, yeah. On the side foot, uh, to the follow line of the roof was painted too much. That to match. Her old bed was still there, although against the wall, beneath a large window. The mattresses were still intact, though the, sh uh, the sheets were gone. The wind 